The Volcano That Changed the World, The Eruption of Mount Tambora, 1815. Two hundred years ago, an unknown volcano caused death and destruction around the world. By Lauren Tarshis. Ten-year-old John Hoisington stared in shock out the window of his family's Vermont farmhouse. It was June 8, 1816. Summer was just two weeks away, yet outside a wild winter snowstorm was raging. Nearly a foot of snow covered the fields the family had planted only weeks before. The family's vegetable garden was buried. The apple and pear trees shivered in the freezing wind, their delicate buds covered with ice. Like most people in 1816, the Hoisingtons grew almost everything they ate. Virtually every bite of the family's food came from the farm, from the corn in their morning porridge to the chicken and potatoes in the suppertime stew. John saw the look of fear in his father's eyes as they watched the snow swirling outside. This storm would kill all of their crops. There would be little food for the family or their horses and cows and other animals. How would they survive? What John and his family didn't know was that during the strange summer of 1816, similar weather disasters were unfolding throughout New England and the world. Snow destroyed thousands of other East Coast farms from Virginia up to Maine. Snowstorms and floods struck France, England, Iceland, and Switzerland. There were droughts and floods in India and killing frosts across northern China. At the time, people struggled to understand what had caused the weather to change so wildly. Were witches to blame? It is only now, 200 years later, that scientists have finally solved the mystery. Very likely, John Hoisington and his family would have been astonished to learn the truth. Their cause of their family's suffering was an event that had taken place a year earlier and 10,000 miles away from their farm. It all started with a volcano called Mount Tambora. A Ruined Land Mount Tambora sits on the island of Sumbawa, which today is part of the nation of Indonesia. In 1815, perhaps 50,000 people lived on Sumbawa, a beautiful land of rushing streams, gentle hills and thick jungles. Looming over the northern side of the island was Mount Tambora, a quiet mountain dotted with villages and rice farms. Nobody had any reason to suspect that the peaceful mountain was in fact a volcano, that underneath its velvety green slopes were snaking tunnels built with magma and explosive gases. Like many volcanoes, Tambora looked like an ordinary mountain and had been dormant, quiet, for centuries. But on April 5, 1815, Tambora woke up. The first eruption shook the island and sent out great plumes of fire and ash. But that was nothing compared with what would come five days later, on April 10th. Kaboom. The volcano exploded with terrible purity, spewing out the great towers of fire. A tremendous cloud of gas and ash shot into the sky. The day turned midnight black, but the mountain glowed red as rivers of lava gushed down the slopes. The eruption went on for more than three days, a deadly storm of fire, gas, ash, and rock. In the eruption's terrifying final stage, a wave of flames and gases swept down the mountain at speeds of 400 miles per hour. This pyroclastic surge devastated everything in its path. Ignored and Forgotten The eruption instantly killed at least 12,000 people living on and around Mount Tambora. Ash and lava ruined the island's soil and poisoned its rivers and streams. Rice paddies were destroyed. No fruits or vegetables would grow. There were no fish to catch and almost every animal had been killed. Trapped without food on the ruined lands, more than 90,000 people on Sumbawa and the island nearby of Lombok slowly starved to death. Can you guess which explosion is Mount Tambora? It's the one on the right, and it's four times larger than the second largest explosion to ever occur. The eruption of Tambora in 1815 was the most deadly and powerful volcanic eruption on Earth in the past 10,000 years. 
Its explosive energy was ten times stronger than that of Krakatoa, history's most famous volcano. Krakatoa erupted in 1883, also in the island chain now known as Indonesia. And yet, incredibly few people outside the blast zone learned about this terrible disaster. The people of Sumbawa and surrounding islands led simple lives. Few of them had any connections to far-off lands like Europe or the Americas. Some British sailors witnessed the eruption, but news and information traveled very slowly in 1815. The only way to get a letter or a person across oceans was on a sailing ship. The voyage from Sumbawa to New York or London would have taken place perhaps four months. Eventually, reports of the eruption did make it to, back to England, but few people paid attention. Somehow, the deadliest volcano in history was ignored by most of the world, and then forgotten. What, were pe what people were paying attention to a year later, in 1816, was the terrible weather, snowstorms in the summer, floods that turned wheat fields into lakes, frost that blackened millions of acres of farmland around the world. Farmers up and down the East Coast lost their crops. In Europe, farmers grew desperate. In Paris, mobs of people broke into warehouses where grain was stored, risking their lives to steal sacks of flour. In China, starving families could no longer feed their children. Floods in India triggered an outbreak of the disease called cholera, which killed millions. Solving a Mystery In 1816, not even the most brilliant scientists would have believed that these weather problems were somehow connected, that all these disasters had been caused by the eruption of a volcano few had heard of. Little was known about climate or volcanoes, but today scientists know that volcanoes can have a major impact on weather worldwide. They have learned by studying recent volcanic eruptions like that of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. Scientists monitored every phase of Pinatubo's eruption in June 1991. It was not as powerful as Tambora's, but the eruption was monstrous, one of the most powerful since Krakatoa, and the second largest of the 20th century. Using satellites and computers, scientists tracked the volcano's huge eruption cloud as it rose into the sky. Most volcanic clouds quickly dissipate, break apart, and fade away. But in a very powerful eruption, the cloud rises so high that it mixes with water vapor and other gases in the stratosphere. It turns into a foam and remains high in the sky. Scientists observe Pinatubo's cloud as it spread across the world. Like a layer of sunscreen slathered across the sky, the cloud blocked out some of the sun's heat and light. Temperatures dropped and storms became more violent. It took three years for Pinatubo's foamy haze to clear. Tambora's cloud would have been even bigger, its effects more devastating. Indeed, like an invisible beast, Tambora's cloud hovered in the sky for about three years. By the time the climate returned to normal, as many as 30 million people had died from Tambora's effects, and many more lives like the Hoisingtons, have been forever changed. John and his family survived the loss of their crops, but they gave up their farm and moved west to Ohio. They started their trek in June 1817, traveling in an ox cart piled with their possessions. Tens of thousands of other New England farmers made similar journeys, many driven west by the hardships. It was one of the biggest migrations in U.S. history. Most migrants went to Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. Farmland in this fresh wilderness was cheap, and the soil was much easier to farm than in rocky New England. The Hoisington's thousand-mile journey took three months. John's older sister, Sabrina, recorded the trip in her diary. She described the family meeting with Native Americans, long days of slogging through mud, and some enjoyable visits with friends they met along the way. They arrived in Ohio in August and were soon settled into life on their new farm. Meanwhile, 10,000 miles away, the volcano that had nearly destroyed their lives went back to sleep, 
sitting in silence to this day. The eruption felt around the world. From China to the Arctic, Tambora's volcanic cloud caused misery. Here is Mount Tambora in Indonesia. You can see in the blue circles all of the effects in different places from the eruption of the volcano Mount Tambora. In China, Yunnan province, climate change caused famine, which means no food. In India, areas along the Bay of Bengal, an irregular monsoon season caused a major outbreak of cholera. Europe, Ireland suffered crop failures and major famine. England had massive rains, flooding, and crop failures. Switzerland had crop failures and rain. New England, Massachusetts up to Maine. Snow in the summer of 1816 resulted in crop failures. Ohio Valley and today's Indiana. Migration of New England farmers led to huge population growth in these areas and statehood for Indiana. Arctic region. Temporary warming caused melting of sea ice. British explorers mistakenly believed the melting was permanent and many were later trapped by refrozen ice. So these are all of the places that were affected by the eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815.